All right, so hey, I'll, I'll save the little informative information for the end of the video. I know the people that are looking for this are just looking for answers. Uh, it always help me out, but we'll jump right into it. So when you're gaming online, you're coming into problems with connectivity, like your matches are taking too long, you don't understand why. So I'm going to help you out with that. I've looked through a lot of the videos, and a lot of them don't really cut to the point. So you're dealing with three issues here, and this is we'll, we'll cover, cover other grounds later. But you have an open NAT type, it says right here, all right? Uh, this means that your gaming console has the ability to connect to anyone's games, host games, and other users will be able to find the, con the and connect to the game you're hosting. Um, that's your quick connection. Let's use Call of Duty, for example, right? So you hit Find Match, and you hit, like, Public Match, right? An open NAT would be, like, you're either going to jump into an already going match with a full party, or you're going to jump into a full group that's ready to go. Modern NAT... This means that your connectivity to other players is neither limited nor open. You will be able to connect to other players, but some functions will be limited. So that's when you like jump into like half full lobbies or like three or four people and you got to wait for more players or whatever. And it doesn't take long, but takes longer than the open. Um, a lot of people fall into that category. And then you have the strict NAT. And this means that you have limited connectivity with other players. And players who have a strict or moderate NAT will not be able to join your gaming session. So NAT is network andre address translation transition. Um, it basically controls and has your private network or, or um, address when you connect to like open areas, it keeps your data private, keeps your IP address private and vice versa. It keeps their information out of your hands. So um, it's kind of an important thing. Uh, you can find videos of people explaining that left and right. So uh, the next thing we'll cover is the PS4. Okay. So you have type one, type two and type three. Uh, a lot of confusion with this too. Type 1 is pretty pretty simple. Uh, the system is connected directly to the internet. It basically means that you're like hardwired to the cable or, you know, you, kind of self-explanatory. Type 2 is the system is connected to the internet with a router. Uh, a lot of people are going to fall under type 2 and not understand what that means. You don't really have to raise any alarm bells unless you're type 3. Um, it has a, the same description, obviously, but um, with type 3, communication with other PS4 systems might be impossible. Now, the NAT type can be responsible for this, but if there are other issues, we'll cover that later. Um, there can be, but it's usually NAT. <laughs> so, for the PlayStation, right, the minimums uh, to play online, the minimum system requirements are 3 megabytes per, per second download and 1 megabyte per second upload. So, all you people that, you know, are, are unsure on what exactly the requirement is, 3 meg download is not very fast, and it's okay. It's... Uh, it's not going to be very pretty with, you know, the high-end games, but it's going to work. And the upload is one meg per second. That's, that's a, you know, you don't have to pay for much. I mean, the better you get, the, the more glorious it's going to look, but that's the requirement. And then you have your ping rate, which is estimated of 150 milliseconds. Uh, basically, if you're connecting through, like, a cable or a DSL through the phone line, you're going to hit anywhere from, like, 40 to 60 to 80 milliseconds. And that's all right. That's perfectly fine. If you're getting your internet through uh, a satellite or, or something like that, uh, you're going to have about 400 milliseconds, which isn't really good for gaming. But, I mean, depending on what games you're playing, as long as it's not a high-intensity shooter or whatever, probably be fine for it. So, this is the minimum system requirements for your Xbox, right? It's not much different from uh, the PlayStation. The download speed requirement is 3 megs. Upload speed is 0.5, and it wants a ping of less than 150 milliseconds. Now, if you want to test your ping... You can go to www.speedtest.net, and that's going to tell you your upload speed, download speed, and your ping at that moment. So uh, it's a great tool to use. So when you're coming across the IP problem, a lot of times, a lot of people make this mistake, is they have the modem, and then they have the router, right? And the modem is still producing a signal, and the router is producing a signal. So uh, you don't want that. When you have a modem and a router, you want to have the router doing all the work, and the modem just taking the data back and forth and translating it and sending it off. See, um, and plus what happens is that the NAT actually comes into play because the modem will have a firewall and the router will have a firewall and both are communicating and slowing down and dropping packets of bits. And that's, that's where your NAT problem comes through. So um, this is with an AT&T U-verse, for example. A lot of the modems you're going to come across are going to have a similar layout. They might word it differently. Uh, if you have problems with this specific model, I'd be more than happy to help you. Put them in the comments below. But 
basically what we're going to go into for this modem is the firewall settings and you're going to go into a thing called ip pass through now this isn't bridge mode but it's similar so if you have an issue where you need to bridge the connection i'll be more than happy to help you with that in another video this is just for the nat with the ip pass through to cause the modem to stop doing the work okay so we set our allocation mode which is basically the how the data is going to travel to pass through so it's not the the modem isn't going to do any work it's just going to be a medium between transferring data like with AT&T you can't just use any modem you have to use one of their modems because of the way that their security works um, don't worry about the default and server internal address it's not important however uh, we do change the pass-through mode to DHCP S fixed now the DHCP is, CP is basically all the connections that are connected at that time so if you have it hardwired to your modem you're gonna have that is gonna be in the list so as the DHCP fix comes into play it's gonna give you a device list now you're gonna hit that drop down menu and you're gonna find your router and when you find that router you're gonna have uh, a list of different connectivities mine is a D-link router for example so if I hit the drop down it's gonna show you a D-link um, Mac address and once you click on it it's gonna fill it out in the manual entry so I block mine out for obvious reasons like the Mac address never changes so don't post that online but uh, the IP address constantly changes so once you find your router from the list and you click it it's gonna show that Mac address right there and then you're gonna restart both of the routers after you do this after you save the information right down in the save box and it's gonna cause the modem to stop doing the work and they're gonna stop conflicting now this is gonna fix probably 80% of NAT problems out there. There are more specific issues and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Me personally, um, I used to install satellites. I did a lot of networking. I uh, I enjoyed it. I got about 20 years for uh, building computers about the same time working with software. Same thing with, uh, I got some college in the background. So I don't mind helping out. Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Um, if this doesn't solve your issue, you might have a more complex problem, but as far as NAT goes, this is this is one of the best things you can do to help. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Hit like if you enjoyed it. This is my first how-to video. So I've worked with routers for a long time, so I don't, I don't mind. And I know a lot of people are confused about it. So I hope it helps. Um, you know, tell me how I did.